Traps can be one of the most infuriating parts of Terraria, getting sniped by dart traps, smashed by boulders, blown up by explosives, or all three at once. So, rather than moving on like any sane person would, I plan on giving the game a taste of its own medicine. I enter the world and the challenge begins. First things first, I chop down a few trees, then make sure my copper short sword is out of my hotbar. Now while I go through the regular beginning of the game routine, here are the rules of the challenge. First, the only way I'm permitted to deal damage to enemies or bosses is by using a very small selection of blocks the wiki qualifies as traps. Second, no glitches are allowed to be used. And third, all potions are fair use, other than Inferno. After a few minutes of building, exploring, and caving, I acquire a magic mirror, Hermes boots, and some iron, which I use to make one of the most important items in the entire challenge, a heavy workbench, which I can use to craft boulders, the first and only weapon I'll be able to properly use until Skeletron is killed. Let me explain. The challenge has three main parts, pre-Skeletron, post-Skeletron, and post-Golem. With each new chapter comes a new set of traps at my disposal. Until Skeletron is defeated and I find the mechanic, there's no way for me to place or use wire, leaving me to only use boulders, the one trap on the list that does not require the use of wiring. I really want to move on to part 2, so I use all of my stone to make 134 boulders I'll use to fight Skeletron. I head over to the dungeon to begin construction on my first, and definitely not last, boss arena. Or maybe it should be called the trap? Not sure but I do know that building it really sucks. The dungeon is practically in the corruption, so I am constantly being attacked by Eaters of Souls. And the only way to get rid of them is to somehow hit them with a boulder or to run far away so they despawn. Eventually though, I am able to finish the trap, which is honestly just a big rectangle with rocks on top. Night soon approaches, meaning it's time to fight the first boss of the challenge. I curse the old man, and the battle begins. Despite forgetting to use my newly gathered life crystals, the fight is a breeze. All I have to do is whack a boulder whenever Skeletron's head looks hittable. It doesn't take long until Skeletron is successfully defeated using traps alone. With the dungeon now open, I drink a hunter potion, and I'm able to quickly locate the mechanic. I want to experience all Terraria has to offer in this playthrough, meaning that I have now entered the longest part of the challenge. Here's the to-do list. And remember, I have to do all of this using only these five items, which at the moment I have very few of. After making a few Danger Sense potions, I head into the mines to trap hunt, as well as collect stone for boulder statues, both of which are things I'm going to be doing a lot of throughout part two. I resurface with enough traps to start preparing to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. The design of the arena is simple. Instead of me being in a box, like with Skeletron, I'm going to put the eye in a box. A very deadly box. Once finished, I feel an evil presence watching me, and the eye is summoned. It's a pretty easy fight, I just go around the box trying to keep the eye inside it, and the eye of Cthulhu quickly falls. The boulders were able to do tons of damage every time they hit. It honestly never stood a chance. Next up on the boster is the Eater of Worlds. A few boulder statues and an arena later, I'm ready. The trap for the Eater is similar to what I used on the Eye, but this one has two danger boxes. I hook the traps up to a timer and destroy the last shadow orb. The double death boxes work perfectly, damaging the boss from all angles. My masterfully crafted traps take down the Eater of Worlds and provide me with enough shadow scales to craft a nightmare pickaxe, which is not the only nightmare to occur because only moments after returning home, the goblin army decides to invade. This is extremely unfortunate because I currently have no way of defending myself. The second I see the message appear, I start scrambling to set up some kind of defensive measures. Unfortunately, I am far too slow, forcing me to try and build the trap while simultaneously being invaded. Let's just say it does not go down smoothly. That is until I manage to somehow set up a basic boulder statue trap. Despite the utter chaos, the goblin army is eventually defeated. With the foolishness of not having any defenses on my mind, I upgrade them right away. And thank goodness I do, because it's slime rain time. The actual rain part is pretty boring. I just sit in my floating fortress, waiting for it to end. When it finally does, King Slime is summoned and furious. Which is very apparent because he is definitely the hardest boss so far. Wow, I never thought I'd say that about King Slime. He kept teleporting inside my safe house or just sitting on top of it, where I only have dart traps. Yet in the end, the King of Goo is defeated. Sticking with the royal theme, Queen Bee is next on the hit list. I grab my traps and head into the underground jungle. I'm able to quickly find a beehive and start breaking in, where I discover the most annoying enemy of the entire challenge, the humble bee. With the way that they attack and the lack of ways to strike back, they are 
aggravating to deal with. I despawn them and make my way into the hive itself, where I immediately make the mistake of breaking the queen larvae. I momentarily entertain the idea of building the arena while she's attacking me, then realize how stupid that would be, and instead just teleport home so she'll despawn. Instead, she says, frick you, and follows me across the freaking world to kill me, where she quickly does. But I'm not done with the queen yet. I find another hive and this time make sure not to break the larva. Then I begin construction on the trap itself. There was no real plan while building it, I basically just winged the entire thing. It's a series of long tubes with traps inside. I spawn in Queen Bee and hope my not a real plan works. She really takes a difficulty up a notch. Up a few in fact. This was the first boss I felt actually threatened by. I have several close calls, especially when she brings regular bees into the fight, but despite the difficulty, Queen Bee is eventually befeated. Next up isn't a boss, it's the Old One's Army. Yeah, I'm gonna be real with you, the Old One's Army is pretty straightforward. I just dug a tunnel underground, placed a bunch of traps, spent an hour laying down wire so boulders would all drop at different times, failed attempt 1 because my traps were hitting the crystal, failed attempt 2 because the stupid dark mage hovers so the boulders don't hit, spent another hour upgrading the arena, then finally succeeded on attempt 3. See, not very interesting. Now I know there are two more difficulties to the Old One's Army, but I still have a ton of work to do, so I'm not gonna be trying the other difficulties. I sincerely apologize to the two Old Ones Army lovers watching. Just kidding, I don't really care, moving on. I have now completed everything I want to do pre-hard mode other than two things, the Great and Mighty Wall of Flesh and the visually impaired Deerclops. I get started on the Deerclops' arena right away. It, like all the other arenas I've already used, is quite simple, the main difference being that I have to stay above the boss at all times. But now for the hard part. No, it's not actually fighting the boss, but getting the three flinks for required to spawn the Deerclops in. Unfortunately, my smooth brain forgot to actually record me farming the underground tundra, but I do have a few frames of me standing by a flinks corpse with an accompanying trap nearby. Just trust me, it took forever, unlike the actual fight itself. The Deerclops was able to deal out some pretty heavy damage, just not nearly enough. The worst part by far were his stupid magic hands, which coincidentally was my nickname in high school. I nearly die at the end, but the Deerclops does first, leaving me with one final enemy before hard mode. Building the arena for the Wall of Flesh was a tough process. I didn't know how I could deal constant damage as it's constantly moving. After four long hours of work, however, I finally finished the design, which favors pure size over complexity. The trap itself is simply a really long tunnel with a few balls at one end. That sounded a lot less weird in my head. Picking up my courage, I toss in the voodoo doll. The wall of flesh emerges and creeps towards me, right into my trap. The satisfaction of seeing the wall of flesh's health just tank is wonderful. And while I annihilate the wall of flesh, if you've enjoyed the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you considered subscribing, as well as leaving this video a like. And I'll need the support because the great and gruesome wall of flesh is defeated, releasing upon the world the spirits of light and dark. I didn't know it at the time, but life for me was about to get a lot harder. A lot harder. But first, I need to go through the hard mode or grind. Everything is going like normal, then out of the blue while looking for adamantite, this happens. I didn't notice it right away, but I had accidentally come across one of the rarest items in the game. I finished collecting the adamantite I need for armor and begin excavations on a massive arena I can use for all the mech bosses and a few others. The next step to prepare for the mechanical bosses is to get some souls. So I head to the hollow to begin even more excavations, this time to serve as a souls of light farm. It was a complete disaster. I died a total of six times just mining the thing out, not to mention when I accidentally spawned in the queen slime. Then just to add insult to injury, the game decides to throw the pirate invasion at me, an event I was definitely not ready for. The actual pirates aren't too difficult to kill with my basic trap, but when the flying dutchman arrives, I know it's about to suck. I have no real way to damage airborne enemies and am forced to take it down with pretty much only dart traps. It takes me a full 20 minutes to finally take down the ship, long enough for me to leave my room and make myself a glass of chocolate milk. Which I promptly do. With the living hell that the pirate invasion was over, I begin construction on the largest trap yet, which I will use slightly modified versions of to kill all three mechanical bosses. It's basically just an upgraded Skeletron Arena, a tube with a boatload of boulder statues on top. With the arena complete, I head into the underground corruption and discover what pure pain feels like. All the enemies are so obnoxious that the second I get enough souls, I am out of there. I make a mechanical worm and begin the battle. I have never, in the hundreds of hours, I've played this game had an easier destroyer fight. I mean, just look at the raw damage output. The fight ends in under 30 seconds and provides me with a very misplaced confidence, which somehow persuades me that I'm ready to take on the twins, which I'm definitely not. I get absolutely destroyed before they're even at half health. 
Still riding on the success of the destroyer fight and feeling the twins fight was a fluke, I gather a few more souls and try again. The fight was closer this time, but still not very good. The second loss finally persuades me that I might just need a new plan. So I come up with the idea to have a teleporter at each end of the arena, so if I'm in danger, I can just teleport away. This new plan works flawlessly. I defeated one eye and was left with spasmatism with only a few hundred health left. I had done it. My new plan was a success. Psych, it's daytime. Spasmatism despawns with only 211 health remaining. In absolute ferocity, I say frick you, Rhett and Spaz, and move on to Skeletron Prime. It's honestly a pretty tough fight, but with so much surface area, Skeletron falls to the insane amount of boulders. This unfortunately means I have to face the twins again, but this time is different. Instead of them making me look like a fool, I make them look like fools. When I shout spell I cup, they foolishly respond saying I see you pee. What foolish filth, what abominations of eternal goal ability, what ludicrous creatures. And with one final roll of a boulder, the twins of tomfoolery are banished to the realm of thoughtless minds. Whoa, I think I just blacked out there for a second. Anyways, with the mech bosses defeated, I can now collect Chlorophyte and Life Fruit. And while the Chlorophyte grows in the jungle, I build a mini farm to collect turtle shells. I get all three way faster than expected and use them and a bit of Chlorophyte to craft myself some turtle armor. Oh yeah, I guess I should also mention that I killed Queen Slime soon after, but let's be honest, does anybody actually care? The fight was super standard and uninteresting. It's at this point in the challenge when things really take a turn for the worse. All six of the remaining bosses have an absurd absurd amount of health and tons of defense, and I'm supposed to kill them using traps alone? Looking back, I realized just how naive and innocent I was at this moment in the playthrough, not realizing the insane challenges I would soon face. And the pain begins now, with Plantera. The trap I built for that voluptuous bulb is a stroke of genius if you ask me. I blow up a big area in the underground jungle and begin construction. It takes quite a while to complete, but it's well worth it. The idea is that I can just ride a minecart in circles around her while she gets constantly whacked by boulders. I spawn her in using a nearby bulb and start riding. Not her, unfortunately, but the minecart track. It works almost perfectly. The only flaw is that I occasionally get thrown off the track for no reason. The other problem is less of an issue and more of an annoyance. With Plantera's 30,000 health, it takes a full 18 minutes to finally complete the battle. But when she does eventually fall, I'm provided with a temple key. Not wanting to wait another second without lizard traps in my possession, I head right to the jungle temple. I traverse through its deadly halls and arrive at Gollum's chamber, where I immediately begin preparations. When Gollum is defeated and drops the Pixar, I will finally be in the third part of the challenge. I finish placing a row of boulders and go to wire them up before realizing a potentially challenge ending oversight. Until Gollum is defeated, it is impossible to place wire inside the temple, and there's no way to mine lizard bricks. So I'm trapped. No pun intended. My only way of damaging enemies is useless. Is the challenge I've spent so much time on already impossible? In utter desperation to find a solution, I try everything, leaving no stone left unturned as far as strategies are concerned. Until I find land on the only solution available to me. Gollum's chamber has a few pre-wired traps, and although you can't actually see the connecting wires, they are still there. The problem is that there are very few lines that are actually usable, but with no other options, I set up what I hope will be enough traps to take Gollum down. My survival strategy is to sit on the right side of the chamber, staying visible to Gollum so he can't go through blocks, and then just wait for him to die. So I turn on all my timers and spawn Gollum. Clearly my idea is flawed because he immediately goes through the wall right on top of me. In desperation, I go to the main chamber and stand on a platform near the top. And that's where I discovered this is 100% the strategy to go with. I'm able to get Gollum to nearly half health before I do unfortunately die, but at least I gathered some vital information about the fight. I added in a few general arena buffs and spawn the Gollum once more. The upgraded arena works like a charm and I'm able to easily defeat the Gollum with the very few traps at my disposal. The unfortunate part is that Gollum does not drop the much needed Pixar, meaning I just have to rinse and repeat until I get it. At least I wish it was that simple. I spawned Gollum for a third time and things are going well until he randomly decides to despawn mid-fight, meaning that I now have to farm lizards until I get a couple more cells. All in all, I have to go through the process of killing Gollum, then farming cells until the Pixar is finally dropped by the sixth Gollum killed. With it finally in my possession, I raid the temple and come out with a pretty good haul of super dart traps, spear traps, and most importantly, spiky ball traps. I have now officially entered the third and by far most difficult part of the challenge. So pause the video, grab a snack, and get ready for the craziest shenanigans I have ever pulled off in Terraria. 
Following the natural progression of the game, Duke Fishron is up next. Using my new and much more powerful traps, I built a positively massive death box over the ocean, complete with arena buffs, an asphalt platform, and a teleporter at each end. I make a trip to the glowing mushroom biome and snag myself the elusive truffle worm, then use it to summon in the Duke. The fight starts off pretty good until Duke Fishron makes a fatal mistake. He kills the innocent and undeniably cool slime, Sport. This pushed me over the edge. The Duke was going down no matter what. During the fight, there were definitely a few sketchy parts, but after 16 minutes of pure concentration, Sport is avenged and Duke Fishron falls. Only three bosses now remain, and next on the hit list is the Empress of Light, one of the hardest bosses in the game. Without much of a plan, I built a super janky mini trap to try and take her down. It looks pretty pathetic, but I spawn in the Empress anyways. As expected, it's a decently difficult fight, not to mention that the trap itself was not doing very much damage, which turns out to be a real issue. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. I hadn't managed to get her even close to half health in an entire night, and there was no way I could more than double my damage output, or survive Daytime Empress. This was my lowest point in the entire challenge. Being crushed so harshly so close to the finish line was devastating. The Empress had defeated me. One night was simply not enough time to kill her. One night isn't enough. One night. That was it. Killing her in one night is impossible, but maybe not with two. Here's the plan. 1.4.4 added Shimmer Transmutations, and along with it, the Enchanted Moon Dial, which instead of skipping to the next day, like its Sundial counterpart, skips to the next night. Precisely what I need. After fishing for a few hours, I finally get the Sundial, then transform it in Shimmer along with a few other useful things. I tear down and redo the arena with a much simpler approach, once again making use of teleporters, which I can use in any sticky situation, or for the main purpose of surviving the 20 seconds of Daytime Empress I am forced to endure. With the arena complete, it is once again time to face her. Night 1 goes pretty well, but my anxiety skyrockets as day approaches. Mere seconds before the day starts, I use the enchanted moon dial. Then immediately overreact and teleport right into an attack, which kills me instantly. After such a horrible performance, I turn to the thing I left most, accessories. I figure I might not be able to avoid her attacks, but maybe I can dodge them. I set up a farm in the dungeon hoping to get the black belt, an item that grants the wearer with a 10% chance to dodge an attack. Yet I emerge from the dungeon with more than just the belt. I also manage to grab the tabby as well as a paladin shield, both of which become extremely useful throughout the rest of the challenge. I change up the teleporter system a bit and go in for for attempt 3. The first night is pretty standard and I arrive at day. I use the moon dial and... I made it! My plan is a major success. The Empress hits phase two and night number two continues, but as soon as it arrives, it's gone. Unlike her health, which is far from it. I try to survive during the second day, but get sniped by an off-screen projectile, leaving us with one final obstacle to overcome. How can I deal enough damage to kill her in only two nights? Because up to this point, I have always been behind schedule as far as damage is concerned. I search and search for a solution and arrive with one last Hail Mary, luck potions. And I'm not even sure if it'll work at all. The Terraria wiki doesn't say anything about luck potions affecting traps. There's only one very unclear sentence holding up my entire plan. Damage calculations in many situations are influenced by luck. That's it. The possibility of beating the Empress of Light completely rides on this one sentence. Positively hoping this will work, I fish for what feels like days and gather quite a collection of pearls. A few of both white and black and one pink, which I promptly use to make luck potions. And with very little confidence in the plan, I drink my one and only greater luck potion and summon in the Empress of Light. Then remember, Remember, I actually have to turn my traps on. The damage is undeniably higher than with all my other attempts. She falls a decent way past half health before the day arrives. Exhilarated by the success of the plan, I use the moon dial. Yet with one simple error, one miscalculated teleport, I fall once more to the seemingly unkillable Empress. And in the clarity only granted while facing defeat, I poetically write, well shucks, but also not? A very accurate interpretation of my current situation. I now have proof that my last ditch strategy works, but on the other hand, I failed and will once again have to face my greatest opponent. My only greater luck potion is now gone, leaving me to hope a regular luck potion is enough. I spawn in the mighty Empress and make my way to day.
which I luckily managed to survive through. There's just one problem. My luck has run out. Literally. But I've already made some good progress, so no matter which one of us dies at this point, it will be extremely close either way. As time creeps ever forward, my concern and doubt grow. Only one hour remains till the day arrives. One hour till either she or me is defeated. I stand on my ground and... Holy crap! Please! 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 With only five seconds till my certain demise, the Empress of Light falls at the hands of my traps. A feat that seemed impossible so many times, finally overcome. And with the Empress's mighty reign finally over, only one thing stands my way of ultimate glory. Moon Lord, you're next. Almost. There are just a few things I need to do before then, such as the Martian invasion, which is actually a lot easier than expected. Even the Martian saucer is quickly taken down. Next up on the list of things I have to get over with is the Pumpkin and Frost Moon events. For both of these events, I use a super janky and last minute arena, which completely fails against the mini bosses. But being 60 plus hours into the challenge already, I'm not too worried about fully completing the events. With all of that finally out of the way, I stop preparations on what I already know will be the most death intensive part of the challenge. The Lunar pillars are already difficult by themselves, so I really try and make adequate preparations. I build a sky bridge across most of the world so when the lunar invasion begins, I can hopefully set up my traps in safety. Once complete, I move on to the lunatic cultist trap. It's nearly identical to the Empress of Lights, just smaller and involving fewer enchanted moon dials. With it complete, only one boss arena remains to be built. My idea for the Moon Lord fight is quite simple, and like all my other plans, it involves death boxes. But in this case, three and a half of them. One for each hand, one for his fifth eye and half a box for his heart. And in case you're wondering, the center part where I stand is just copied from a YouTube video about cheesing Moonlord. I make a ton of potions and get ready for the chaos I'm about to face. And feeling nervous and excited all at once, I begin the battle against the lunatic cultists. It's extremely easy just like it always is. The only somewhat dangerous part is the phantasm dragon that's there during almost the entire fight. But without moving hardly an inch the entire battle, the lunatic cultist is killed and the lunar invasion begins. The first pillar I decide to take on is the nebula pillar. With all of my traps still at the cultist arena, I am forced to try and grab them, then set them up while constantly being attacked by enemies that literally blind you. Let's just say that attempting to take this pillar down makes me regret all my life choices that led up to this moment. The pillar itself is half underground, and the projectiles shot by the evolution beasts are nightmarish. They not only follow you, but can also travel through walls. Same goes for the nebula floaters, completely voiding my plan of just hiding in a safety box. I die a total of 10 times during this pillar alone, but finally, the first celestial pillar is destroyed. Next, I decide to take on the Stardust Pillar, which goes almost exactly like the Nebula event. Enemies that can go through walls and a ton of super obnoxious deaths. But in time, I do manage to destroy the pillar. Absolutely hating my life, I decide to get the Solar Pillar out of the way. And knowing that just charging in there with no real plan will end in an absolute disaster, I switch up my strategy a bit. Instead of building the trap in the middle of the fight, I build right on the edge where the Solar Creatures spawn. Once I kill one batch of enemies, I just walk a little ways and get another few monsters to kill. This works fine, it's just really slow. So I migrate into the fray and set up a mini trap. I have no idea how, but in total I only die twice, which is the least deaths of all the pillars. With the solar pillar gone, only one remains till Moon Lord is summoned. Totally abandoning the boring strat, I build a trap directly above the vortex pillar and manage to only die a few times. I die right after all the needed enemies are killed, and since traps don't deactivate no matter how far away you are, while the pillar is being destroyed, I start to actually add the traps to the Moon Lord arena. But the final celestial pillar is destroyed before I've even finished wiring everything together. With my heart rate already through the roof, I see the message impending doom approaches and somehow manage to panic even more. I finish the wiring and rush to gather the much needed traps and vortex fragments. I magic mirror home and frantically craft some super healing potions. And I do just in the nick of time, because mere seconds later, the mighty moon lord awakens. I really needed more time to finish placing all of the traps, time I very much did not receive. So while the literal final boss of the game is attacking me, I do some trap maintenance. Once everything is in place, I sit in my cozy chamber and wait for the Moon Lord to eventually fall. Finally, the first hand is destroyed. I wait a few minutes longer for the next one, but it never comes. I start to pay a bit more attention to the actual damage, where I discover the hand is taking absolutely none, because every 20 seconds or so, it's completely healed. Same goes for the head. I watch his total health for a few more minutes, which confirms 
confirms that the Moon Lord is indeed not decreasing in health whatsoever. I try to fix this problem in every conceivable way. Explosives, more traps on one side, everything. Not understanding how the Moon Lord is able to heal so much, I turn to the Terraria wiki. I have no idea how I didn't know this, but his freaky tongue, once latched on, produces little clumps of health that heal the Moon Lord. If the clumps are destroyed before they reach the Moon Lord's mouth, he doesn't get healed. So with one final idea, I try to kill the health clumps before they can get to his mouth. But being completely stationary means that I'm practically touching his mouth. So my last idea is a bust. Once again, like with Gollum's no wiring problem and the Empress of Light's daytime issue, I'm left with what feels like an impassable obstacle. How can I possibly counteract the Moon Lord's ability to fully heal itself? Is it even possible at all? In absolute defeat, I fall to the Moon Lord and close Terraria for the day, just hoping I'll be able to find a solution. The next day, I boot up Terraria, dreading what I have to do next. I tear down the current arena, gather all the spare traps spread throughout the world, and begin construction on what I hope will be able to solve the unsolvable. The new arena is quite simple in design, but painful in execution. And like all traps are, it's a death box. A death box with a teleporter at each end and toggleable levels. I'm gonna be honest, I'm insanely proud of myself for coming up with this design. While fighting the hands, I can have spiky balls dropping all the way to the floor, but when I need to damage the head, I can turn on a row of blocks that keeps the balls at eye level. But here's the kicker. The only way I could think of to get past Moon Lord's healing ability is to not let it happen at all. This is the part that really sucks for me, and partially for you. I simply need to teleport away every time his tongue gets close. This is positively horrible for me because I'll have to teleport every few seconds, and this is really annoying for you because you'll have to watch me teleport every few seconds. But it's the only solution I could think of, so let's not put it off any longer. I use a celestial sigil, and impending doom approaches once more. The Moon Lord awakens, beginning the madness. Teleporting so frequently is exhausting, and every time I'm a second too slow to teleport, I get set back minutes. This happens a few times, but I finally am able to destroy the first hand, which is quickly followed by the second. Even though I'm not very far into the fight, I'm starting to not be able to focus on the tongue. The contrast between the black background and everything else is making it extremely difficult to focus on such a small, quick-moving object. The top eye takes quite a while to take out, but it does eventually get destroyed, opening up the final enemy of the entire challenge. Seizing upon the fact that if I mess up, Moon Lord can't restore his heart past full health, I pause the game to rest my eyes. The fight has already been going on for nearly 20 minutes, and my eyes have had enough. A few minutes later and not feeling much better, I unpause the game, and boy do I wish I hadn't. Without realizing it during testing, when the Moon Lord goes into stage 2, his freaky health-stealing tentacle attacks you way more often, leaving me without absolutely no time in between attacks to catch my breath. So for the remainder of the fight, I am constantly teleporting back and forth, and I mean constantly. But not only that, Moon Lord's core has nearly double the amount of defense that his hands and head have, reducing my damage output by insane amounts. The trap now only deals 1 to 15 damage per hit, and I have to make it through 50,000 health. While the fight itself is easy to survive, the never-ending teleportation and the constant concentration make it the worst experience I have ever had in Terraria. I slowly chip away at the Moon Lord's health until I'm able to get him to 1,000 remaining. 1,000 health till the challenge I've spent nearly 70 hours on, fought every boss on, overcome infinite obstacles on, and used only traps on is finally complete. All of that effort to arrive at this one moment. After 45 minutes of battle, the Moon Lord and the game along with him are finally defeated. As the credits roll, I just want to say thank you to everyone who made it this far into the video. I had an absolute blast working my way through this roller coaster of a challenge. And if you enjoyed it too, I would really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribed, and left a comment letting me know how undeniably awesome I am. I have some pretty cool projects in the works that I don't think you'll want to miss. I also just posted a video on my second channel with the full unedited boss fights if you want to see that. But once again, thank you so, so much for watching, and see ya!